सो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल गोविंद नारायण पुरोहित आई एम कवरिंग ऑलमोस्ट ऑल टॉपिक्स ऑन थीरियोजिनोलॉजी एंड इन द करंट सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द एंड्रोलॉजी एंड देन इन एंड्रोलॉजी वी आर टूडे गोइंग टू डिस्कस समथिंग अबाउट द कॉपुलेटरी ऑर्गन ऑफ द मेल डोमेस्टिक एनिमल्स now i am professor gn purohit uh, the dean post graduate studies and university head department of veterinary gynecology and obstetrics college of veterinary and animal science bikaner rajasthan india friends sexual intercourse or copulation is the deposition of sperm into a female via a male organ and the penis is the male copulatory organ as you all know now the penis Uh, has got uh, many layers the first one is the tunica albuginea which is a covering which covers the uh, penis and then uh, there are two corpus cavernosum which has got sinusoids and the third layer is the corpus spongiosum uh, in, in, uh, and the urethra which is uh, just near the corpus spongiosum spongiosum the penile urethra the penis is almost cylindrical in shape it extends from the ischiatic arch this is the ischiatic arch to the umbilical region this is the umbilical region except in the tomcat the penis is supported by penile fascia and the skin the penis has got three parts the root or base or the phallus root also known as the radix penis it is attached to the ischial bone on ischio cavernous muscle the body of the penis or the phallus body also known as the shaft or the corpus penis is formed by fusion of two crura the proximal projections of the corpus cavernosa and then corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum then there is the tip of the penis or glans penis or also known as the phallus tip which is a conical exterior part of the penis freely movable within the sheath or the prepuce now here you can see this is the ischio cavernous uh, muscle this is the penis root and attached to it is the retractor penis muscle and then this is the body of the penis this is the sigmoid flexor uh, a curve formed in the penis and this is the tip of the penis or the glans penis now in uh, domestic animals there are two types of penis the fibroelastic and the musculo cavernous the fibroelastic type has uh, small and confined blood spaces and these are divided by a large amount uh, of fibroelastic tissue this type of penis when quiescent exhibits a sigmoid flexor the fibroelastic penis appears in ruminants the bull the ram the buck and the boar in musculo cavernous or vascular type of penis blood spaces are relatively larger and the lining and septa are more delicate and more muscular stallions dogs and rabbits have this type of penis the vascular type of penis contains a large ratio of the erectile tissue now what is the difference between the fibroelastic and the muscular cavernous type of uh, penis in fibroelastic type of penis there is a thick fibrous tunica albuginea whereas the tunica albuginea is less pronounced in the muscular cavernous there is less erectile tissue in the fibroelastic type of penis whereas there is more uh, erectile tissue in the uh, muscular cavernous type of tissue there are little and then little blood enters the penis during erection in the fibroelastic in species with fibroelastic uh, penis whereas more blood enters the penis during erection the lengthening of the penis is achieved mainly by straightening of the sigmoid flexor of the penis in the fibroelastic type whereas lengthening of the penis is achieved entirely by vascular engorgement in the musculo cavernous type of uh, penis the penis functions uh, as a organ for passage of the urine as an organ performing sexual intercourse to deposit the semen in the female tract 
Now there are some muscles which are associated with the penis. The ischiocavernous muscle, also known as the erector penis muscle. These are paired muscles located at the root of penis. They connect the penis to the ischial arch. This is the ischiocavernous muscle. This is the ischial arch and it connects the penis. The uh, erection uh, in bulls is because of this ischiocavernous muscle which this muscle relaxes and the uh, penis straightens and the sigmoid flexor becomes straight so penis comes out. Then there is the bulbospongiosus muscle, a single muscle that covers the root and ventral surface of the penis as well as the bulbourethral gland. Uh, the function of this muscle is to empty the extra pelvic urethra of the sperm in a similar way to the urethralis muscle emptying the pelvic urethra. Then urethral muscle is a circular muscle which aids in ejaculation and maturation by its forcible contraction. So the urethra and that is uh, the urethral muscle contracts and pushes uh, uh, whatever is inside to the exterior. Then there is the retractor penis muscle. These are paired muscles originating on the caudal vertebrae and inserting on the ventral surface of the penis. It maintains the sigmoid flexure of the fibroelastic penis when the muscles are contracted. When the muscles are relaxed, the penis protrudes through the prepuce as the sigmoid flexor unbends. Sigmoid flexor and these are the retractor penis muscle. In stallions, the retractor penis muscle is relatively underdeveloped. The retractor muscle contracts to retract the penis into the sheath and relaxes to allow the penis to extend from the sheath. sheath. The protrusion of the penis in stallion involves penile erection and engorgement of the penis because of the blood. So that increases the length and the penis protrudes out. In bulls, the protrusion of the penis is not affected much by the erection but more by relaxation of the retractor penis muscle and straightening of the sigmoid flexor. The same is with nearly all ruminant species and the boar. The penile erection and ejaculation. The erection is due to a neurovascular mechanism, an inflow of arterial blood and an obstruction of the venous return. Penile erection is caused by contraction of the ischiocavernous muscle or the erector penis muscle which compresses the penis against the ischium, obstructing the blood flow through the dorsal veins. Consequently, the vascular spaces of the erectile tissue become distended with blood. The rigidity is due to an increase in the intracavernous arterial pressure, simultaneous with contraction of the perineal muscles, the ischiocavernous, under the somatic control of the pudendal nerve. In all species, vaginal intromission of the penis requires full erection except in the dog. The penis of the dog contains a bone called os penis which facilitates the vaginal entry without full erection. In fact, the fully erected dog's penis cannot enter the bitch's vagina. So species wise now we discuss some of the peculiarities of the penis. The bull characterized by S shaped curve with sigmoid flexure which is post scrotal. Sigmoid flexure is post scrotal in bulls. Uh, the penis in adult bull is 36 inches long from root to the tip. The erectile tissue is small in amount compared to the stallion. So these are the, this is the uh, bull penis, the prepuce which is retracted. This is the free part of the penis. These are the raphe or the grooves and this is the glance penis and this is the urethral process. The stallion penis has large amount of erectile tissue. And length is about 50 centimeter. Uh, at the time of erection, the penis will double in length and thickness, with the glance penis getting enlarged three or more times than its normal size. So, this is the stallion penis, and this is the external lamina of the internal prepuce, and then this is the prepucial ring. This is the internal lamina of the internal prepuce. And this is the attachment of the internal lamina of the internal prepuce to the penis. This is the corona glandus. This is the glans penis. And there is a small urethral process. At the base of the glans in the stallion, there is a border known as corona glandus. This is the 
coronal glands. The projected end of the urethra outside the glands, gla, uh, glands is known as the urethral process. A small projection is here which is known as the urethral process. The urethral pro process is situated in the fossa glandus. Then in the ram and the buck, the penis is characterized by presence of urethral process extending 4 to 5 centimeters beyond the glands. This is the urethral process. This moves round during ejaculation and sprays the semen deeper into the uterus during ejaculation. In the boar, sigmoid flexor is present but it is pre-scrotal. The cranial portion of the penis has no glands but is spirally twisted counterclockwise. Spirally twisted counterclockwise. The, in the dog, the os penis is characteristically found in the male dog. The penis of the dog in its caudal part has two distinct corpora cavernosa separated by median septum. So there is a bone in the penis of the dog. In the cranial free portion, there is a bone called the os penis which varies from 5 to 10 cm in length depending upon the size of the dog. Ventrally, this bone is grooved for the urethra. Penile bone is also present in foxes, raccoons and hedgehogs. The glans penis has two parts, the parts longa glandus and bulbous glandus. Bulbous glandus expands greatly at the time of erection and prevents the withdrawal during ejaculation. The vagina also contracts over the penis. This results in coital lock or the copulatory tie in the dog during breeding. In the tomcat, the penis is directed caudally and downward. The urethra is located dorsally. The os penis is often lacking, but when present, it is 3 to 4 mm long. There is no glans penis. In the cat, the bulbous glandus is absent. Penis is terminal cap about 1 cm that contains numerous papillae or spines pointing towards the base of the penis. These may cause the female to cry out during intromission of the penis. In the male cat, the glance is covered with 120 to 150 penile spines that are directed backward away from the end of the glance. These penile sp spines start to appear at about 12 weeks of age and are fully developed at puberty. The spines rake the walls of the female vagina, which is probably a trigger for the ovulation. The cat is an induced ovulator, so probably this is an trigger for the ovulation. The female will utter a loud yowl as the male pulls his penis from her vagina. This act also occurs to clear the vagina of other sperm in the context of a second mating, thus giving the latter males a larger chance of conception. Then the penis of the camel, the camel penis is an interesting feature. The camel has a pre sigmoid flexor. The penis is fibroelastic and about 60 cm long. It is directed backwards when flaccid. The spiral glans penis is curved giving it a hook shape. Externally the penis is covered by triangular shaped structure the prepuce which opens to the rear. Then the male camel urinates towards the rear between the hind leg. You can see in this picture the male camel always urinates towards the back side because you see the penis is directed towards the back side. Due to presence of well developed lateral prepucial muscle in addition to the cranial and caudal muscles, the prepucial orifice can be directed either cranially or caudally during erection and maturation. When uh, the animal is, uh, the male camel is sexually aroused, the, this relaxes and the prepuce is uh, and the penis is oriented forward, otherwise it is oriented backward. Then the prepuce, the secondary endrological organ which is formed by invagination of the abdominal skin fold and encloses the penis is known as the prepuce or the cutaneous sheath. The prepuce is double invagination of the skin which contains and covers the free portion of the penis when it is non-erect. It covers the body of the penis behind the glance when the penis is erect. Prepucial orifice is the external opening of the prepuce. Prepucial lining is a freely movable membrane or modified skin which is attached firmly at the glance penis and the prepucial orifice. 
the blood supply uh, to the pupils is by the external pudendal artery and the nerve supply is innervation from the pudic iliohypogastric and inguinal nerves the pupils is hairless and contains many smegma secreting glands important for lubrication between the shaft of the penis and the pupils during copulation within the pupils are varying amounts of striated muscle fibers the cranial pupusial muscles responsible for attracting the pupils and the caudal pupusial muscles responsible for protecting the pupils the pupils functions to enclose non erected penis within pupusial cavity and protects the erect penis from adverse conditions it holds the penis external to the animal's body it maintains the penile movement through providing sufficient passage by opening the pupusial passage so this is the pupus in the bull and the buffalo bull is long and narrow the pupusial orifice is surrounded by a tuft of long pupusial hairs there are usually two pairs of cranial and caudal pupusial muscles protractors and retractors that draw the pupusial opening forward or backward the fornix of the pupus is the point at which the pupus reflects upon the penis just caudal to the glans so here you can see in the buffalo bull also there is a pupus and again this is a surti buffalo bull and this is a murra buffalo bull so this is the sheath uh, pupusial uh, sheath depth and it is being said that uh, the sheath depth should not be very very uh, high as otherwise the pupus will be hanging uh, downwards very long and is liable to be injured the stallion has pupusial cavity which is 15 to 20 cm deep and the second reflection of the pupus is present to form the pupus proper of the penis the opening between these two cavities is called the pupusial ring the engaging disengaging of the glans penis in the pupusial ring causes the sucking noise frequently heard when the gelding or stallion trots the stallion has a double folded pupus sometimes in the outer fold wax accumulated and it must be removed manually this wax is no, called as beans so these are the uh, uh, this is a picture of the stallion penis and pupus then in the boar pupus has a small orifice the caudal part of the pupus is narrow and the cranial part is wide then uh, animals which have intra pupusial urination uh, swine and ruminants which urinate inside the pupus whereas horses dogs and cats they extend the penis beyond the sheath and urinate so there is extra pupusial urination then the associated structures of the penis the sigmoid flexor is a s shaped band of the penis which is characteristically found in bull buffalo bull boar ram buck and some wild animals like giraffe the sigmoid flexor is post scrotal in most species except in the boar in which it is pre scrotal you can see here it's the scrotum and this is the sigmoid flexor in the bull but in the boar you can see this is the scrotum and the sigmoid flexor is pre scrotal during copulation the flaccid sigmoid flexor becomes straightened due to relaxation of the retractor penis muscle and after copulation the sigmoid flexor takes its original s shape due to contraction of the retractor penis muscle then the os penis found in the male dog it is occasionally present in tom cat it is absent in other species the os penis of each species are characteristic shape which serves as diagnostic taxonomic structures in certain livestock then the corkscrew penis the corkscrew penis is the modified structure of the external extremity of the penis which is a characteristic feature of the boar this probably helps in intromission of the boar penis in the genitalia of the sow the cervical canal in the sow is corkscrew type now the other structures of the associated with the penis the phalli are the external extremity of male genitalia in place of penis which are which is characteristic feature of ducks and geese this helps in intromission then penile papillae is already said earlier the penile papillae are located at anterior portion of the penis which is characteristic feature of the tom cat hamster house mice and rat this probably helps in ovulation the other structures include the urethral sinus is located around the end of the penis which is characteristic feature of stallion this contains the urethral 
sinus diverticulum. This is the fossa glandus, this is the urethral sinus, and this is the urethral process. The urethral process is a filiform appendage extending from the anterior portion of the glans penis, which is characteristic feature in the ram, buck, and giraffe, and it, help, it helps in spraying the semen uh, deeper into the uterus. The blood and nerve supply, internal pudendal artery, supply to the root of penis, the obturator artery to the body of the penis, and external pudendal artery gives rise to dorsal artery of the penis. The nerve supply includes the pudendal nerves. So let us recapitulate what we have learned today. The copulatory organ is the penis. The penis is made up of outermost tunica albuginea, corpus cavernosum, corpus spongiosum, and the pelvic tenile urethra. The penis extends from the ischiatic arch to the umbilicus. The penis has three parts, the root, body, and the glands. The penis is of two types, the fibroelastic types in ruminants and boars, and musculocavernous types in stallions and carnivores. The penile erection is caused by contraction of the ischiocavernous muscle, the erector penis muscle, also known as the erector penis muscle, which compresses the penis against the ischium, obstructing the blood flow through the dorsal vein. The retractor penis muscle is responsible for extension and retraction of the penis. The abdominal skin fold that encloses the penis is known as the pupus. Swine and ruminants urinate inside the pupus, whereas horses, dogs and cats extend the penis beyond the pupus and urinate. The dog penis has a bone, the os penis or the baculum. So this is uh, my email. You can contact me gnpobs at the rate gmail.com this is my linkedin link and this is my youtube channel link so friends kindly listen to the lecture completely give your comments likes share the video and subscribe to my youtube channel Narayan Purohit if you like them thank you thank you so much